when you're working on a mobile app, there is a good chance that you're working with passwords or OAuth tokens or maybe API keys that you need to store somewhere securely on the user's device. So let's learn how to do just that. Before I'm going to show you how to implement all this goodness, I will show you a little bit of the end result. So here we have an entry um, where I can enter my super secret password. So let's just make it password 01 exclamation mark, something like that. It doesn't have a check if it's secure or not, uh, but it's just going to save it securely on the storage. So let me just save that right here with the click of this button. And then whenever I show it, it will pull it from the secure storage and show it here in this alert box, which isn't very secure by itself, but it is mostly about being stored securely somewhere in between there. So let's go check out how to do just that. Now, before we go over to Visual Studio, there is something I want to explain a little bit, a little bit about what this can actually be used for, because this is kind of like an extension of the Xamarin Essentials Preferences API, which allows you to kind of key value pair set um, um, preferences or other small pieces of data that you might want to save for your application. Um, but this will do the same thing. It's still key value. And also um, on the doc page is docs page, it's noted that you will have to use this for kind of small pieces of string or, or some other other things that you can serialize, um, but definitely not bigger things. So uh, think like the OAuth tokens or passwords or other things that you might want to have secure because kind of like the only thing, well, the only thing this does is um, save this um, um, data in a more secure place on your Android, iOS or UWP file system um, where it will be encrypted, where it will do all these things that other um, outside users, outside people cannot access it um, even outside of your device or whatnot. Uh, the implementation details can also be found on the docs page of this API so you can see what is going on. Um, it uses the, the built-in OS encryption keys and mechanisms. And so, you know, it is as safe as Apple or Google or Windows says that it is. Um, so that's kind of what you can do with this. Now, there's a couple of scenarios possible. You can just save it um, to save the API key that you use to communicate with your, um, your own REST API maybe. Um, so that it's not readable in your code and, and you can, you know, just on the first launch of your application, download that code from somewhere, which might not also be very secure, but you'll, you'll figure it out. Uh, but you can save that, uh, or maybe you can get an OAuth token from um, um, some social login from Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Um, and that has a certain expiry time, maybe 30 days. So you can save that there for 30 days um, and see whenever it's expired, you can auto refresh it, but you can save that in that secure place so that other other people cannot access it. Now, one other scenario that comes to mind is I also have a video on the biometrics plugin, which is really cool, but the biometrics plugin only does um, verify if the user is the user that belongs to this device, right? It only verifies if um, this face is registered to the device or this thumbprint is registered to this device, um, but you still have to take into account the, the login, right? Um, so um, it's it's basically just a shortcut to fill in the, the password or the pin code for for the user. Um, so you will have to save that password or that pin code. Um, and you have to do that, or you can do that, you should do that in the secure storage that I'm going to show you in a little bit here. So you can perfectly combine that with that biometric um, video that I put out there. And then whenever the fingerprint or the face is verified, um, you can pull out that password from the secure storage and input that for the user automatically. So that's a bit of background that I wanted to give you. Um, there's one other big note for Android specifically, Android has this auto backup going on, um, I think from API level 23 and up, it's noted in the documentation, which the link is down below. So be sure to check that out. Um, and if your app goes through the auto backup, um, then whenever the user restores their app on a different device, then the encryption keys have changed and um, your secrets might not be retrieved anymore. So that is definitely a scenario that you want to take into account here. Um, so be sure to check the documentation on that and build something in your app um, to um, circumvent those scenarios or just take it into account. I think if a key is not found, um, it will just throw an exception. Um, so whenever that happens, just um, re-authenticate the user or trigger another way to get the secret that you were actually trying to get from the user. Okay, now without further, further any ado, um, let's just quickly hop into code and show you how this API actually works. 
Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio for Mac 2019. Um, you can see on the left a File New Exam Informs application that I've just created for this. Um, you can see the XAML page right here and it's running on the iOS simulator on the right. Now, like I've already mentioned, this is supported for iOS, Android, UWP, and they all have their own implementation. I'm going to show you this for iOS. I think Android has um, a little bit of platform specific setup that you might need to do. Um, for iOS, I found it the most um, 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 complicated, which is still not very complicated, but uh, we'll see that in a little bit. So that's why I'm showing you this on iOS. Um, I'm sure you can figure out the other ones. Um, and I'm just going to show you how simple actually this API works. So um, at the time of recording, um, we just released iOS 15 and Xcode. Well, Apple just released that um, and a little bug snuck in with Hot Reload. Um, so the Hot Reload won't be working um, like it regularly does in other videos. So I'm going to update the title here, but it's not going to automatically update on the running application here. Um, but we're going to talk about secure storage sample right here. So let's save that. And I'm going to implement a very simple UI, which will just take a um, string, um, which should be a password and a button to actually save that, right? So um, let's just remove all of this. And I'm going to add this entry, give it an X name so I can reference it in the code behind. Let's call it password. Um, and let's give it a margin so that it looks a little bit nicer, just a little bit nicer. And let's add a button under that uh, with a text that's called save and a clicked handler that will be generated. Uh, well, actually there is one probably from a rehearsal that I did just now. And let's just do it like that. So I'm gonna save this. Uh, we have a button and a entry box. Um, so let's see how we can save the value from that entry um, in um, um, the secure storage. But again, if you do some kind of OAuth flow, you will get the token from um, like a third party provider and you don't have to have the user input anything. Basically, you will just grab that token and do the rest programmatically what I'm going to show you right now. So let's go to our code behind for this page um, in our solution uh, to the shared project main page .xaml.cs. And here is our button clicked handler. Um, and if we now go to examine.essentials.secure storage and see all the APIs that are in here, we have um, um, a couple of those the get async, so that um, gets a value by the key. And you can only get strings. So whatever you want to save here, it has to be convertible to a string. Um, which can be a lot of things, of course, but uh, I already mentioned it should be like simple values, not too long, else it can take a long while because it has to be encrypted, decrypted, those kinds of things. So you don't want to take it too long. Um, so this will just get a value by um, the key that you give it. You can remove a certain key. So maybe something has expired or maybe you don't need something anymore. Just remove it. You can remove all, which basically clears out the whole store, uh, removes all the things in here. And you can, of course, do set async so you can uh, provide a key and a value which is then going to be stored in the secure storage. Um, so first, let's do the set async because we are doing this on the button click, which is going to be a save thing. Uh, you have to come up with a key. The key is probably something that you want to uh, define globally in your application. Um, right now, I'm just going to do password and uh, I'm going to set that to the value of password dot text. Um, there we go. And it's set async. So I should do await. And then for my button click handler, I should make it async. Um, and whenever I do that, it should store my password um, in the password field in the secure storage. Um, now let's also maybe let's add another button, which is super very not so secure. Uh, but I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to call this show. Uh, I am going to generate a new clicked handler here, button clicked one, very descriptive. Let's go back to our code behind and now let's do um, await uh, display alert. So it's just going to alert to me the value that is in um, um, the password field in this case. So title your password is, you can see it's very secure. Um, the actual message, I'm gonna get back to that one in a little bit and the string cancel. So let's make that okay. And I should make this a sync as well. Um, so we're gonna get the value and actually let's make this for password is examine.essentials.secure storage.get async. 
And I think, like I mentioned earlier, that this is going to throw an exception whenever the key is not there. So that might be an interesting use case here. Get a sync password. And um, I should wrap this then in a, a try. Um, let's see, catch. And then I need to make this a little bit different. Uh, let's make this string password is nothing. And so this way we can see what's going on. So this is this is this will be nice. Okay, so let's make it this and we should make this a wait as well. And then with the catch, let's make the password is nothing yet. So now we know whenever a exception happens, it will set it to nothing yet. Um, and we will know that um, it actually throws this exception whenever that's the case. And then we can just set here the password. Okay, so there we go. Um, now with the button clicked, this should be all good. This is good, good, good. Um, yeah, I think we're ready to restart the application. Well, actually, not quite yet. Let me stop this right here because I mentioned that we need to do something for iOS specifically. So let's go into the Solution Explorer and the iOS project. Um, and here you have the entitlements P list. We don't touch this uh, very often, but this is the entitlements that you need for your application. Um, and it, there's something funny going on for the secure storage, but only when you're running it on the simulator on your local device, you will need an entitlement to access your keychain on your device. Um, I, I imagine on macOS, um, so it, it actually like mimics the secure storage by storing it in the secure storage of your Mac, if that makes sense. Um, so we're gonna have to do this entitlement right here, um, or maybe it's the keychain. It's called the same thing on iOS. So I'm not sure how this entirely works under the hood, um, but kind of like the important thing for you is that the entitlement is only needed for debugging purposes when using the simulator on the actual device or when you're actually going to release this to the app store, this is not needed. Now I will I will touch upon that in a little bit, um, but for now let's open the entitlements p list. Um, you will get this list of properties, which is not very helpful unless you want to add a, a key the hard way. But here down at the bottom we also have this entitlements view in Visual Studio, and here you can see a list of like all the default entitlements that are there. Um, and let's scroll down to where is it? Where is it? Enable keychain. Here we go. So enable keychain, click that, and you can see that it adds a keychain group. Now, if you want to do more advanced stuff with this, you have to dig into the keychain groups and see what's going on here. But automatically, it will add for you like the uh, bundle identifier, which is the identifier of your app in this entitlements P list, and this should be all that is needed. So this is one thing. Now the other thing is kind of interesting. Uh, we can close this entitlements plist file, then go back to the solution and right click on the iOS project and go into the options. Now, if you're doing this on Visual Studio for Windows, it will look very similarly. Uh, but if you go to the project, you have to right click and do properties, I think. Uh, but the options should all be there. It just looks a little bit different. Um, you can figure it out. And then in this um, um, new window right here, you're going to go to iOS bundle signing. Um, and you can see that this is kind of specific here at the top, uh, depending on your configuration. So you can specify different um, configuration here, depending on if it's a debug or a release build or um, the iPhone simulator or the actual iPhone platform. So here you can specify it for debug and iPhone simulator. You can say custom entitlements and I can just click on this browse button and click the entitlements P list and say, okay. And this should set it for only like the debug and iPhone simulator configuration. Um, so this won't affect kind of like whenever you take this to the app store because there it's not needed and it might even give you um, an error if you actually do so. Also, if you don't see set this, um, whenever you're running your app and you try to save or get a value, it will also show uh, an exception, throw an exception um, saying that you don't have the right entitlements. So if that's the case, then you know what to do right now. So let's do okay. And actually let's start the application then now. Um, it should come back up. It should show our new fancy interface with uh, the entry and a button. And I should be able to enter some um, value there, click the save button, and then also click the other button to actually get the password again. Actually, let's first click the show button to see what's going on there, because that's going to be interesting. Um, okay, so this is actually not what I expected. Um, your password is nothing. Um, while I would expect it, uh, but I definitely read it wrong in the documentation uh, that it would throw an exception. So I guess it throws 
throws an exception whenever the encryption keys are wrong now. So whenever um, something can be decrypted or something else is wrong. Um, but if you just try to get a um, um, key, uh, well, a value for a key that doesn't exist, it will just give you an empty string. So that's what's happening here. Now you know. Um, so okay, so let's do the other one. And actually, let's do this. Um, uh, what should be my super secret password? Subscribe to my channel. One, two, three, maybe? Let's make it something like that. Maybe you have a ch channel on YouTube that you want to subscribe to. Um, okay, let's save that. So let's just click save. Um, I don't have any feedback here, but I'm gonna trust that this um, set async happened. And actually I can show it um, immediately by clicking the show button now. And you can see that it pulls out um, that from like the secure storage, um, subscribe to my channel, one, two, three, um, so it, it gets it and of course, you know, whenever you kill the application and you go back in here, um, I would expect it to um, again, get my secure um, kind of thing right here. So you can see it still gets my password from the secure storage. And that is basically the one liner how you can um, add values to secure storage and get them from them as well. And um, I'm sure you can figure out how to use the remove and the remove all calls from here as well. Um, so yeah, now you know how to secure storage all the things that need to be stored securely. I think this API is very similar or maybe even identical to the Examine Essentials Preferences API. And it's it's just a couple of one-liners which um, stores some key value pairs. So, you know, it's not very complex. It should be very easy to implement. And now you know how to do it. Um, check out the documentation. I've mentioned it a couple of times before because it's one of those things that you um, want to get right definitely because this is something important and there is a, a few things that you want to need to know here, especially maybe about the implementation details and how everything is actually encrypted um, or you know maybe you don't trust this stuff and you're going to build your own encryption thing um, that's fine as well but now at least you know how to do it through examine essentials um, as always this code can be found up on github so find the link for that and a lot of other links down below in the video description and other than that thank you so much for watching again one of my videos please click that like button if you've actually enjoyed watching this video and want to spread this love through the rest of YouTube where other people can find it as well because that's that is ultimately what that like button does. And if you enjoy this channel and maybe you haven't subscribed yet, go check out that subscribe button. If it is lit up, yes or no. And if not, just click it, maybe ding that little bell so you'll be notified of new content automatically. You don't have to do anything for it. Just sit back and let me come to you. Um, and of course, I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding. <laughs>